Hi, my name is Jens Jensen with Jensen Ecology. Um, I'm a restoration ecologist, work mostly on larger scales for doing uh, wildlife habitat restoration, endangered species work, plant community restoration. Um, and uh, a few years ago, uh, Krista from Midwest Ground Covers asked us to come out to Natural Garden to kind of collaborate here with Austin on doing these garden designs with all natives. Hey everybody, I'm Austin Eyscheid from Austin Eyscheid Garden Design based in Chicago and I create sustainable landscapes that are four seasons of interest. So our last video that we did here was more about the design principles and you know what we were trying to create here at the Natural Garden and today we are going to talk more about lessons learned throughout the last year and a half. Yeah, about a year and a half, two years in, I think overall the gardens look really pretty good, especially considering the level of inputs that we're putting into them. You know, we're not amending soils, we didn't amend soils, we're not doing a ton of maintenance, and then when some other species sort of show up in the gardens, we sort of let those go if they do kind of coexist nicely. You know, we're not super um, stringent about like what we remove or what we edit out. I think that's like kind of a segue into talking about like the continued stewardship and like editing and maintenance of these things, because they are a living thing and they will change over time. So knowing that they're not static, and because these plants are reproducing and moving around. Um, so that continued kind of care and stewardship of the gardens are, is very important. Yeah, it's best not to leave clients in the dark about maintenance. It's really important to let them know that, you know, garden's not done on the first day of planting and make sure that we're looking towards the future. Um, a few species that were kind of here in the gardens before that we didn't edit out to begin with, and they weren't necessarily in our plant combinations, but on second thought and seeing them kind of coexist with things we've, we've left. And a few examples of that would be like the Eupatorium, Joe Pieweed that, that was just here. And it's like, oh, it actually kind of coexists, especially with this, this, this group of, of larger statured plants. Or like uh, Silphium, Prairie Dock, and I think we had a few compass plant that, again, a pretty aggressive plant, but in our larger combinations, I think worked. And maybe we just had a few scattered here and there, not large beds of them. So, Again, it's, you know, we're not having to totally stick to the script. If, if, if we have a combination um, that, that we, we really want to see, but then other things are in there that, that can coexist fine, then, then, then that's great. And it's also a little more sustainable because we use the plant material that was already there and kind of incorporate that. One thing we used out here is, you know, we had a lot of like uh, Sporobolus, for instance, uh, prey drop seed is kind of like our matrix plant. And we sort of, it was existing in a lot of these plants and we sort of opened up areas to then put in diversity uh, you know, color, flowering species. Um, but that really helped to kind of hold the ground plane in a lot of areas. So then we could then add things and then decide, oh, actually maybe we need to cut back a little more Sporobolus. But we left it in for the time being in certain areas because then we didn't have to make a decision right away because it, it kind of held the ground plane. Yeah, so I think like the areas, like you said, the areas with the Sporobolus have been the easiest to maintain. They've been the most legible landscapes that we've done here because we had that base ground. So think of that when you're designing, you can always add more diversity in later, um, but having that ground layer is really important. And plants that are aggressive reseeders like Echinacea or maybe Agastache or um, Budalua, Curtipendula, those things might be better used as a second or third year um, perennial because those things are a little bit too much for a new garden and let the other things establish. And then once that community is established and can handle that reseeding, uh, less things will germinate and be able to take over the garden. Maybe the more aggressive species, you can use smaller plant material. Um, and then the, the, the less aggressive species, larger plant material to give them a little bit of a head start. If you're all planting in one year, for instance, if you can wait and then phase it in, fine. But if you're doing it all in one shot, maybe you kind of have different sizes because obviously the smaller stuff, even if it is more aggressive, will take a little bit longer and, and maybe it gives kind of evens the playing field a bit.